So, Arturo, of course, we've heard that the Democrat, D Democratic Party officially has endorsed the incumbent, Jimmy Gomez, and we have heard that um, some of the voters in Congressional District 34 are uh, just sort of passively going along with the incumbent, like, hey, he's been nice to us, and so we'll just vote, vote for him. And so what I, my question for you is, what do you say to those voters? Why should they vote for you? Yeah, there are politicians that will say and do anything to get elected. Uh, we saw that last year. We continue to see that every day. Um, but, and that it's hip to be a progressive all of a sudden. After Bernie, everybody wants to be a progressive. <laughs> and that, uh, you know, you, 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 people are saying, hey, I'm a progressive. I'm taking money from Wall Street. I'm taking money from Pharma. I'm a progressive. I'm a progressive. I'm taking money from predatory lenders that are... Uh, keeping our money, our, our, our communities, uh, uh, pro, you know, they provide predatory loans and they provide uh, financial products that are entirely disadvantageous for our communities. Pharma continues to uh, uh, go after, uh, uh, special, you know, the political class and keep them addicted to this money, which has, you know, resulted in skyrocketing uh, costs for pharmaceuticals. You know, take money from Wall Street, take money from all these sources, you know, and I'm repeating myself, but you can't call yourself a progressive and take money from these people. And that's why I'm taking a bold step on that, on that issue. And that's why we're running a clean campaign. We're taking money out of politics. We're not taking money from Monsanto. We're not taking money from these groups. We're not taking money in a district that's 60% Latino, 15% Asian, highly minority. You have a huge population of immigrants that have been persecuted by immigration forces in this country and private prisons have had a devastating impact on our communities, I'm not taking money from private prisons. So when you ask for a difference, that's a core difference uh, between me and Jimmy Gomez. Uh, so Arturo, um, we have a huge problem with turnout here in the United States. Um, about 40 to 60 percent of the people uh, go to vote. Um, so my question to you is, as, as a grassroots organizer yourself and as somebody that's been with the people, what is it that's causing the people to stay at home during the elections? And how are you going to help fix that? Yeah. I think Trump helped see that difference, but I think yeah. for many years, it was sometimes hard to see the difference between Republicans and Democrats on many issues, right? People got depressed. People got uh, apathetic. You know, it doesn't make a difference. Uh, people weren't speaking truth to power on critical issues. They weren't taking tough stances on climate. They weren't renouncing to the power of special interests and taking money out of politics. Um, when it came to immigration reform, you had Democrats that were deporting our communities at historic rates, depressing Latino participation, and this is Democrats. Of course, Republicans have declared an all-out war in our communities. So, you know, you see that a lot of these districts, especially Democratic districts, that people grow apathetic. But I think that when you bring somebody like Bernie, when you bring politicians that speak truth to power, that inspire people, that say it's, it's time to make a real change and, and a real systemic change that will actually build an economy that works for all of us and that will address all of the core systemic issues, whether it's on climate or immigration or the economy or, you know, you name it, even, even on, on guns and security, all these issues need sincere and, uh, and an authentic approach. And so what we're seeing is that we're carrying on Bernie's message. And we're seeing that the 80,000 new, 80, new voters that registered in this district between the summer of 2015 and June of 2016, they're inspired. They're excited. And they're angry as a result of uh, Donald Trump. And so we're going we're gonna to talk to those voters. We're going to inspire them. This is a uh, tens of thousands of new voters that were brought onto the voter rolls, and we're going to speak to their interests and to their energy, and we're going to get them out to vote. Okay, the, the existing climate in D.C. right now is a Republican House, Republican Senate, and a Republican sociopath in the White House. <laughs> when you get elected, what effect are you going to have on those relative to policy legislation? Yeah, yeah. Well, let's face it, uh, you said it yourself, 
Republicans control our government, every aspect of it. They control the House of Representatives, the Senate, and the executive. But what they don't control is everyday people and their willingness to fight and to speak truth to power. So I believe that this is the time to elect people that are going to fight. This is the time to elect not career politicians, but to elect movement candidates that are going to speak truth to power and going to hold the, their feet to the fire, of course, of Republicans. Of course, we're going to fight like hell, but also of Democrats. So when it comes to President Trump and his administration, we're going to be speaking in the floor of the House of Representatives. We're going to be organizing folks in Washington, D.C., and we're going to be fighting like hell. But we are also going to be organizing advocates, and we're going to be organizing communities in D.C. at a national level and here in Los Angeles. And we're also going to be able to put ourselves behind and lead from behind and let our people lead. Because unless we get millions of people to speak up across the country on these critical issues, because we have a multi-front war before us, that whether it's you know, education, which we didn't talk about. There's so many issues that, that we're not going to have time to speak about today that are being assaulted by this administration that we're going to have to fight on. And the only way we're going to be able to do that is if we stand up with courage and fight. We, we can't afford to elect more career politicians. And so that's what I bring to the table, an entire career of speaking truth to power. And I'm going to continue to do the same thing when I get to Washington, D.C. I'm going to continue that career path, and I'm going to speak with integrity and values and not compromise those. So I think it takes a fighter, it takes courage, and it takes real intellect and strategy to go there and build a coalition of like-minded progressives. Money politics transcends party lines. You have, you know, pressure of corporate interests for Democrats and Republicans. Um, I mean, speaking of education, Betsy DeVos pe paid for her position in the Trump administration. Uh, what are you going to do when you get elected to pressure uh, other, you know, people in Congress and, and in D.C. to really feel that pressure of, you know, thinking twice when they're, you know, this systematic money and politics issue that we face as a nation? We need to expose it, I think, first of all. I think that you're seeing that when Democrats, and we've seen, we saw, the, the folks saw, saw what happened when 12, 13 Senate Democrats voted for, voted against a pharmaceutical amendment introduced by Senator Bernie Sanders. Did you guys see that? <laughs> so, you know, I, I've been hearing that there's a lot of anger within the Democratic establishment of Senator Sanders for doing that type of leadership and speaking truth to power and calling his own. Of course, he's fighting Trump. Of course, we're going to fight that agenda. We're going to energize people and we're going to move people. And we're going to rally people. But I, I want to reiterate something that unless we build and rebuild our party and rebuild our home, we're not going to be able to protect future generations. I think we're at a tipping point, folks. I think that the, the Trump victory uh, has exposed real systemic issues that we have in our country. Uh, from our economy to the critical crisis we have on our climate, I think that the clock is ticking and we need to take leadership and we need to win these types of elections. Unless progressives win, unless progressives speak boldly, and we saw what the Tea Party did on the other end, they won. And they were able to take control of the party. We, as a Bernie movement, we need to take control of our own party. And the only way we do it is by organizing, by speaking truth to power, um, and by being very articulate and disciplined. And that's, that's a challenge for me in this race, and it's a challenge for all of us that are organizing at the ADEM level, at the city council level, at the state level. We need to be very organized, we need to be very disciplined, and we're all in this fight together, and we need to move it ahead. So, you know, kind of ventured a, a little bit away from your, from your question, but I think it's all connected. So we're aware that the state of California is home to the most popular universities in all of the nation. Um, but we're also aware that they're not serving the residents of California. Do you have concerns about that and ideas? So you have a state where, despite the fact that people say we're very progressive, yes, we've advanced very progressive climate policies and we've made progress in many different areas, right? But when you look at college tuition, the fact that people still dare to propose fee increase at the CSU and UC system, uh, I believe that's a way, uh, uh, that's, that's a method of disenfranchisement of the most vulnerable communities. I was a student body president in, in my university and uh, I learned firsthand of the importance of retention programs and outreach programs. And the fact that you have seen a declining minority population 
and UCLA and other campuses that are public universities, it's a real, it's a real issue. So I think that our public institutions need to recommit themselves to their founding principles, which were to provide affordable, almost free public education. That's, that's the way they were founded. And I think they, they are uh, going in, in, in an entirely different direction. I think that when it comes to their governance and the leadership of, of, of higher education, we need to be looking at affordability, at access, at diversity, at, um, of course, we need to be looking at research and innovation, and we need to make sure that our institutions are competitive globally and attracting students. But uh, a lot of these strategies have become fundraising strategies because folks from outside of the country and other parts of the world pay astronomical fees at the cost of ensuring that our campuses are diverse, at, at the cost of ensuring that we're serving the, the new California. California is, unless we educate the diverse population that is growing up in this state, we're not going to be able to be the fifth or sixth most powerful economy in the world. So in order to keep ourselves at the fifth or sixth economy in the world and the most competitive economy, we need to really reinvest much more into the CSU and the UC system and then the community college system and all, all the way down to uh, preschool. Uh, and I think uh, we need to do that with the type of movement that we've been talking about in this conversation. Yeah, my hopes and aspirations, and I'll wrap up with that. I think that my hope is that we, we as a people in this country can come together around a clear agenda that recognizes the importance of class and that we need to figure out how to break through the barriers of race, of sexuality, of gender, of all these issues that have kept us divided and have channeled our country into a course that is concentrating wealth with an elite, it's concentrating power towards forces that are greedy to the point where they'll jeopardize the entire existence of our planet. And my hope is that we can break through that, through a hopeful message, through a visionary agenda. Uh, that we're representing in this district, in this race, but that everyday people, I saw a bunch of ADEMs here, you represent that too. And so we need to continue to fight for that. And that's my hope and my aspiration, that we will come together around a, a unifying agenda that will defeat the fascists, defeat the racists and the yeah. xenophobes, yeah. and that will put us on a course for uh, real prosperity that brings our people together. That's my hope and aspiration. All right. Thank you. I just got one last thing. One last thing, Apudo. Yes. Uh, what can we do to help you out to fill this vision, to be able to help out, be part of the solution? What are a couple things that we can do here as, as uh, residents and as ADEM delegates and, and uh, everybody else who, who came here in the audience? <laughs> yeah. So, he said dinero. Well, that, <laughs> that's certainly one thing. And we're going to continue to raise uh, uh, dollars. You know, we're, as I said, we're not going to be the top money raiser in this race, but we're going to win because everyday people are showing up and they're volunteering and they're making phone calls and they believe in, in our message. And we hope that people can volunteer, can knock doors, can make phone calls. We have offices in Highland Park. We're going to have an office in El Sereno. We're going to have an office in Boyle Heights. And we're going to have, hopefully, an office in the, e in the west side of the district, which is Koreatown. All that takes resources. Or make, we're working very hard to make sure that we can make that happen. Um, we might have some satellite opportunities, but we really need folks to go to the district. If there's one thing you can do, go to the district, help us out, uh, get your friends, get your families to donate or walk precincts. If you know people in that district, call them up. Tell them about this moment. This is a historic moment for our region. We want to bring the political revolution to LA. Right. And the way we do it is if we all bind together and we expand it. So I think that's one way to do it. <laughs> <laughs>